Coming up on DTNS, Virginia gets delivery by hovering drone. Lamar gives us first impressions on the iPhone, Nintendo Switch, and Sega Genesis Mini. And we all have thoughts on YouTube, no longer considering some people verified. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September 20th, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. Drawing the tech news you care about, I'm Len Peralta. And breaking in and disturb, you know, messing up Lynn. I'm sorry. I'm Lamar Wilson. I was just so frantic uh, here in Los Angeles. Sorry so about that. To be back. I, I, it's been yeah. years. It's been years. It's great, man. Uh, and uh, real quickly, I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And now back uh, here. We have all gathered oh. together here today for one purpose. Uh, mm. That was to tell you about the superstorm that Len survived on Good Day <laughs> Internet. Yes. Uh, if you missed that conversation, by all means, uh, become a patron. Patreon.com slash DTNS. We also got some of Lamar's thoughts on Apple Arcade on Good Day Internet today. But we are on DTNS now. So let's start with a few tech things you should know. Google announced the desktop versions of Chrome will get tab previews when hovering over a background tab. Initially, this would be limited to previews of title pages, but full thumbnail previews are planned as well. As a note, Safari and Microsoft's Edge have included tab previews for some time, so Chrome is catching up a little bit here. Chrome will also get updates to the address bar to provide faster answers to typed queries like weather or sports scores. Chrome will also let users set colors for their browser and specific tabs without having to install a full Chrome feature. Theme. Google says these updates will roll out over the fall. Google CEO Sundar Pichai announced that Google will invest 3 billion euros over the next two years to expand data centers across Europe, as well as investing 600 million euros in 2020 to expand data centers in Hamina, Finland. To uh, power this, Google has announced 10 new renewable energy projects in Europe, including two new wind projects in Finland that will double, w- uh, how about double? instead of W, the company's renewable energy in a country and power usage for Finnish data centers carbon-free. That's yeah, that's how they say it in Finland, so you're good. Okay, I'm good. Okay, yeah. excellent. We'll ask Patrick about that to be sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, Uber's probationary license to continue operating ride-hailing services in London expires Wednesday, less than a week away. Transport for London, remember, did not renew Uber's license in 2017 because of failures in reporting criminal offenses and conducting background checks. But then in 2018, a judge granted a 15-month probationary license after Uber made several changes to how it does its business. London Mayor Sadiq Khan has not responded to an assembly member's question about Uber's license renewal. So they're just keeping us on tenterhooks about whether Uber's going to get renewed or not. You know what? It's probably going to get renewed, but still. Something that also probably is going to happen. Reuters reports its sources say Fitbit has hired investment firm Quantalist Partners to explore a sale. Reportedly, Quantalist has urged Fitbit to consider a sale of the business for several weeks now, perhaps gaining interest from Google and private equity firms. Fitbit is number two behind Apple in the smartwatch market space and has a value of about $1 billion. Let's talk a little bit more about why you can't be sure it's me on YouTube anymore. Uh, YouTube has changed its method of verifying accounts. Now, the first change uh, is just trying to combat the idea that a verified check means endorsed. A lot of people sometimes react as if that check mark means YouTube supports a channel. This is a problem for Twitter as well. So what YouTube's doing is instead of a check mark, or in the case of musicians, it was often a music note, uh, verified channels of any kind will just have a gray background. So it's like, it's just going to be black text on white for everybody. Unless you're verified, then it's black text with a little gray highlight. The second change is a little more complicated. Previously, any channel that reached 100,000 subscribers could request verification. And in the early days of YouTube, sometimes people like myself just got verified somehow. I'm not even sure how that happened. But starting in October, YouTube will only verify channels that it feels have a need for authenticity. So if it belongs to a brand like Nike or something, a public figure, celebrity, a musician who's well-known, an artist, uh, or or any artist or creator that might be subject to impersonation, and they want to make sure that you know which is the real account. To get or even keep your verification, a channel YouTube, uh, a channel will have to have YouTube consider it to belong to a well-known or highly searched for creator, artist, public figure, or company, uh, be widely recognized outside YouTube, have a channel name that's similar to other channels so that you want it to have it verified so you know which one's the real one, mm-hmm. uh, and algorithms and humans are combining to consider these, 
And they sent out some notes this week uh, to people saying, hey, uh, you will no longer be verified after October, just so you know. Or if you're keeping your verification, they actually sent notes to say you're going to keep your verification, but it's going to change from a check mark to a highlight. Yeah, so I received a letter that said I will be keeping mine. I guess I won. I'm not sure how, how, <laughs> how, how, how that works. But, you you but, just you know who you are now. I, like, I know oh, who I am. Yeah. So uh, I, I want to say this excuse of very meaning and doing people. I, I call bull on that without saying the full word. I, I just I just don't see it. I, I feel like people understood that verif you know remember verification started with Twitter, right? I, uh, or maybe so I've never had me confused what that check mark means. Uh, I, I guess maybe they're trying to combat some of the more extreme channels that are really popular to not, you know, that check means endorse yeah, them. Yeah. I, I get that argument. I just didn't see a, a, a problem here. I do want to comment on, on the wider effect of this as a YouTube person. So I didn't, I didn't have, our friends did, including uh, Tay Zandi, we'll, we'll mention his in just a moment, because he had an interesting point uh, about his. Th this isn't a necessarily, people aren't mad because they're taking away verification. They're mad because it's the, it's this increasing idea that YouTube is just crapping on the, on the creators. Like, there's one thing after another that they do. They say they consult us, but they don't really and, you know, we're, we're just at a time where people are getting demonetized, kid channels are being attacked, and now this. And it's just like, you know, I just want to matter as a person. And it just seems like they do every little thing to just take that, that away yeah. from you. And that's what really what it's about. It's not a pride thing saying I'm verified. It's, it's more so this issue. Yeah, and I, I think that's right. I think this is about feelings because, frankly, you should be verified. Let's say we were starting from scratch. You should be verified because you have a, a very high-profile channel. You post regularly. To be honest, my YouTube channel, I post like once a month. Uh, it doesn't have that many subscribers. I don't use it for 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 that. So being verified, like I wouldn't expect to be verified if this was brand new. And they said, you know what? We're going to get out there and verify because that channel doesn't have a problem. However, Daily Tech News Show, I would like to be verified. It's never been verified on YouTube, but I would like it to be to make sure people know like, yes, this is the real DTNS. It's a brand. Uh, that said, I think you're right. What's going on here is people are feeling like, well, wait a minute. Last year, you demonetized my channel because I didn't have enough subscribers. Now you're uh, taking away my verification because I don't have enough subscribers. Yes. Why do I, I admit I've had that involuntary feeling of like, why even bother with YouTube and trying to build an audience there? Cause they, they apparently just don't care. Yeah. That, 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 that's definitely the, uh, the feeling. Uh, Tay Zandi mentioned on, on, on Twitter. Uh, he said, but why me? I'm why me? I mean, really you take away my verification and that he wasn't, and I know him personally. He's one of my best friends. He wasn't mm -hmm. being haughty. He wasn't being haughty there. He's like, I'm the definition of the listed criteria. He literally is like, totally. like the person that needs to be verified as Tay Zani. People steal his videos all the time. He, they need to know that's the guy that that sang that chocolate rain song. So, um, and and you know that Susan, I can't pronounce her name, last name. Do you anybody? Majiski. Yeah, she responded. She. She, you know, PR answer. She gets the frustration. They're going to work to, you know, address the issues, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I don't know. I, I normally am not a pessimistic person, but YouTube has just been really weird this year. I think I understand why they did it this way. And it's a, it's another example of Google and, and YouTube having a, an engineer's mindset, which is one of the problems we have is that people perceive verification as us supporting something. And when some verified person does something controversial, we get the blowback. I think changing from the check mark to the highlight is a great solution to that. I, I agree with you, Lamar. It's not a huge problem, but hey, why not eliminate it altogether? And this seems to be a fairly elegant way to do it. You know, nothing much controversial about that. But then they said, well, what if there are people out there who are verified or got verified way back in the day and we're really not sure why or that they need it? Let's make verification something that is is very, not special, but is used in particular situations that everyone understands uh, and not just a, a badge of honor 
that everybody wants to get because they've been on for a long time. Exactly. And so what you do there is you go through and you have an algorithm spit out a list based on some criteria of, okay, these are the most frequently posting people. Uh, these are the people with the most outside referrals. These are the people with the highest search index. Uh, and then you say, great, uh, keep those people in and tell everybody else. Like, Give it hey, everybody sorry. Else. Yeah. You don't matter. Yeah. 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 Although, you know, to, to take away a verification that somebody wears as a badge of honor, whether or or not it really means anything whether or not they deserved it based on their audience and their output and the nature of their creative uh, uh, videos why not just let the people who are verified stay verified right. so that so that they don't go nuts and then youtube doesn't have to issue a statement on a friday afternoon saying sorry we really didn't think this through once <laughs> yeah. again we've upset all the creators <laughs> it's like it they would just been so much easier to do it that way going forward here are our rules yeah Totally. Thank you. And if that that is the issue. I never had a problem with, with the with I actually like the highlighting of my name and mm -hmm. saying that I replied to a comment. I like that. You know, this but but to take away something when they've been it just feels like, well, dang, uh, what 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 do I do now? You you take yeah. away my monetization, you let you know celebrities are being featured, that's in that all the tonight shows are taking all the trending. Like what's left for me as a as a person? So I get the feelings. I, I mean, they, they don't seem to be saying that people were mistakenly verified. I, I would sort of understand if they're like, look, a lot exactly. of people are verified that that didn't really pass a high muster of verification. But that's not what they're saying. So if if these verified people are literally verified, why would you unverify and go, well, we used to be sure who they were, but now we're not. Algorithms rule, man. That's yeah, what it yeah. is. That's what it, Sarah's right. It's just all about this computer. All right. Well, uh, what about Twitter? Twitter might be trying to do something to help us get along better on the Twitters. What are they doing, Lamar? What are they doing? So Twitter is expanding the test of its hide replies feature from Canada uh, to now include the U.S. and Japan. So hide replies let you hide any reply to your post. So when you hide a reply, any viewer of your post thread will have to click on a plus symbol to see the hidden replies. Uh, in this Canadian test, Twitter says the feature was mostly used to hide irrelevant abusive or unintelligible replies. Uh, 27 of those whose replies were hidden said that they will reconsider how they interact on a platform. Uh, I like this. I feel like Facebook has done this for a while where you can kind of hide some- You could delete someone, a reply even, yeah. yeah but, but someone can still go and see what you, what you did. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not, I, I like the idea. I think it can cause more controversy because like if I don't like what someone said, says to me and I click hide and they go and see, you know, someone else sees what I'm hiding. Well, why are you hiding that? You know, and, but, you know, I don't know. I feel like it can, it, it can cause more of a, yeah. a, a, a conversation that doesn't need to be had. I would rather just it be invisible and just be invisible. But that's me. Well, I, I think it, it, it's up to whether people use it judiciously, right? Like if, if someone starts hiding all the posts that disagree with them, then people are going to make a stink. But if someone hides something and then you click through and you're like, oh yeah, that's obviously spam. I, you know, that won't be Good that point. controversial. So it kind of depends on how people use it, which is why they tested it with the most polite nation on earth in Canada to be like, well, okay, responsible people used it by hiding unintelligible or irrelevant responses. Let's see how the US and Japan does it. I think on Twitter too, I know for me, there are certain subjects that uh, sometimes I can't help myself, but I usually stay away from because I'm like, it's just incendiary. Like you're just going to mm -hmm. get all the troll replies. I know mm -hmm. how this goes. I've been here before and I just don't want it associated with me. Now I can't stop people from doing that. I mean, I could block them, uh, but, but being able to have a little bit more control over the discourse that happens afterwards. And yes, I'm not deleting the replies. I'm merely hiding them. You can see them if you really want to, but I think it cleans it up for everybody else a little bit more or gives me the opportunity to. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I kind of like this. I, I agree with you, Lamar, that that there are some pitfalls, and we'll see if it ends up being a problem. And I wouldn't be shocked, uh, but I do like the idea to say, like, hey, let's let's have a let's have a thread system that is, you know, the, the, that allows you to to control the conversation you're having in a thread without having to delete or block or or mute or anything. Like yeah, that. And, and I think today's a perfect example. The iPhone comes out. I, I don't want any of the Android people talking to me, so I will go in there and hide. <laughs> <all of them>. <laughs> <laughs> and then the hashtags will be created. <laughs> exactly.
Uh, Alphabet's Wing announced it will begin a drone delivery test program in Christianburg, Virginia next month. Folks there will be able to get kids snacks and over-the-counter medications from Walgreens, select packages from FedEx's Express, and sweets and stationery from Sugar Magnolia all flown to them. The Wing drones will not land during pickup or delivery. Instead, the drone will hover 20 feet in the air and then use a tether to accept and drop off packages up to three packages. Pounds. Wing drones will cruise at 60 to 70 miles per hour in flight with a range of about six miles and deliveries to eligible neighborhoods in the town of about 22,000 are expected to take around 10 minutes each. Wing will not charge customers during the trial. Gosh, uh, I wish it was here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this this sounds good. I mean, this is not a first. You know, we're always quick to point out there's lots of drone delivery being tested in lots of places in the world. But remember that wing is like a little airplane. It's not a quadcopter. So this is, you know, airplane's going to swing over your house. Uh, tether's going to drop down. Uh, and then if it once it senses that the package has reached the, reached the ground, it will automatically release it and take off. So you don't have to deal with the drone yourself. And on the pickup side, uh, the people at the Walgreens, they, the drone comes over, drops the tether down, and then they just hook it up. Once the drone recognizes that the proper weight is at the end, it hauls the tether up into the into the cargo bay, and then off it goes. I mean, and I that know. solves a big problem. It solves well, not a big problem necessarily. It depends on your yard, but the problem of having to land the drone. Or the mm -hmm. problem of right. dropping a package that might have stuff in it that's going to break if you drop it from too high. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what they need to develop is mini Navy SEALs to come down with the tether, you know, and, and the light, <laughs> lights on, right. and then just drop it and then go back up. That, that would solve That everything. would be the best. So well, in addition, story, to, yes, in addition to the kids' snacks, you should be able to order uh, miniature plastic army men from Walgreens, and they would just all drop me? down. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a good test. Uh, they even say they've got uh, some defenses in. If, if somebody goes and like wants to like pull on the tether to, to pull the drone down from the sky, uh, the tether will be released, and then the drone will go back uh, to its landing zone for maintenance. I can see uh, a dog jumping up and trying to grab that for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, think of the yes, the or new cat. mailman. Oh my yeah. gosh, my dog would Ray Ray the dog would definitely do this. <laughs> I'm surprised to hear Ray would do that. Okay. I oh, yeah. Ray's mouth. the one who chews right. mail if she can get her mouth around uh, it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and males who provide mail. Well, yeah, their hands stay on the other side of the door, effectively, <laughs> uh, for everyone's safety. But, uh, yeah, uh, this I don't know. I, I, I think this is a great test. Uh, and, and, and as I said, it's not the first place uh, to do delivery. but uh, And, and it's, it's a limited test. It's a small town. You yeah. Know, they're Limited selection of things that aren't really breakable and probably easily out packaged. Case, and, yeah, exactly. But if anybody's in the area and, and either yeah. is lucky enough to get their stationary tethered down or know somebody who did, let us know. Take a video. I know. I want to see this. Yeah, yeah. Order some goldfish or something from Walgreens and 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 we'll uh, we'll send you a mug. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, TiVo CEO Dave Scholl told CNN that TiVo plans to release a $50 Android TV streaming stick early next year. It would use TiVo's software to recommend things to watch. So taking what you have on a DVR, where it's gotten really good over the years, if you haven't seen a TiVo in a while, of saying like, oh, this is a show that you like to watch and new episodes there. Here's some stuff you might be interested in on the streaming services you have, because you can get the streaming services on the TiVo DVRs now. So they're going to put that in an Android TV stick. I think that's a really good uh, use of something you've developed and saying, well, there's people who don't need a DVR. Let's let's try to serve them as well. Uh, it does not appear to include a TV tuner. If you want that, you just buy a regular TiVo. TiVo also plans to unveil TiVo Plus. Plus, which would be software that aggregates content from multiple publishers, similar to the Roku channel. Uh, this could show up on any of their devices and just be a place where you're like, like the Roku channel, you're like, I just want to watch something. Let me see what's available for free. Uh, not mentioned in the interview with CNN, though, was a report from ZatsNotFunny.com that some TiVo users have started to discover that their DVR recordings start with a short pre-roll ad. Uh, they can fast forward through, but we're not expecting. Uh, TiVo hasn't commented on it, but it seems to be a test uh, that they're rolling out there. I, I guess maybe if they said, okay, we're going to start doing this uh, in lieu of paying for the TiVo DVR subscription. Right now you pay $15 a month or so. This is uh, not that much. They, like maybe if you agree to the pre-roll ads, you don't have to pay that. I don't know. Wow. I didn't know TiVo was still that expensive. I mean, I used to be a TiVo lover like years ago. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it just kind of moved off to, you know, not needing or using their boxes. But yeah, first of all, I didn't know they were that ex- expensive. Second of all, I didn't even know they were still around. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to hear that. Well, uh, and that's the thing, right? Well, like, there are a lot, a lot more competition for TiVo now. It's, it's mm-hmm. easy to, to, to sort of forget that TiVo didn't go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. They sort of, uh, there's a limited number of people who really want to use a DVR for over the air, but they're a significant number. And what happened was Home Run and Channel Master kind of took enough of that audience that TiVo wasn't able to survive on replacing their lost cable subscribers with that. They don't seem to have a really lucrative deal with any of the cable companies whose subscribers are declining anyway. So it's the right move for them to go into a streaming stick and say, hey, we've developed some really good software, which they have. Uh, we, we should get into that game. We should start competing with Roku and Apple TV and Fire TV. That makes sense to me. It, it's an uphill battle. I'm not saying they're going to win it, but that makes sense. Putting pre-roll ads before DVR recordings just seems to be punishing an audience that's going away. Like I, 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 I don't know about that. Yeah, I agree with you. Cool. It's it's a it's a weird uh, situation. All right, uh, let before we wrap up today's show, uh, Lamar has uh, got some insights into a bunch of of hardware. Huh? Uh, I do. Start. Oh. Yeah, you do, man. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> better. Uh oh. <laughs> I know you're excited about the Nintendo Lite. Uh, so let's start with that. I wanted you to tell us a little bit about like what what. What should people know if they're thinking about that Nintendo Lite and they're hoping that Nintendo Lite lands on their desk today? Yeah, so Nintendo Lite is, is being delivered uh, today. It's $100 less than the regular Nintendo Switch, and uh, it's the Switch that doesn't switch. It's it's all in one one little device that's smaller. And uh, I, so I, I, my opinions on it is this. If you have a Nintendo Switch now and you're already traveling with it, you're comfortable traveling and you use it, you don't need it. And, and the thing I'm going to say in my video whenever I get a chance to film it, whenever they come, is this. Just because Nintendo makes something doesn't mean you have to buy it. Because so many Nintendo fans think they get so upset that this thing exists. It's like, it's not for you. It, it, you know, it's if you're good with your Switch, don't buy this one. You're going to be a waste of money. It's However, a compliment to Nintendo that people want to buy everything they make. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get what you're saying. Absolutely. The, the, the second person will be me. Now, I keep my Switch hard, I'll say hardwired, actually it is, uh, in the, the mm-hmm. dock. I don't tend to like to travel with it because it's just it feels a little delicate. So this, I could throw in my book bag, I'll throw in my car in the side door. It's more rugged. I'm okay with it. That's why I'm getting one. And so, and so if you're that person, then you might want to spend an extra couple hundred dollars. Third group, families, kids, it's a perfect device. It's almost the price point of the 3DS, maybe 50 bucks more than what a 3DS typically costs because those are f- fading away. And so, yeah, you, $100 difference to us, tech people, may not be a big deal. But for families and for ordinary people, that's a huge deal. That, that's, what, that's what made the difference between Xbox One and PS4 when they were both launched, that $100 difference. So people do care about the price. So I, I think for kids, it's going to be a great device. Or again, for me, just an extra one that you can throw anywhere to use. And so, it's, yeah, it's going to be $199. And uh, yeah, different colors. And I, I'm, I'm definitely, I can't wait to get mine today. And the thing to remember is if you don't have the Nintendo Switch online service, if you move your saved games and data from your Switch to your Switch Lite, it it deletes it from the Switch, right? Like yeah. y- you have to store it in the cloud to be able to access it on both machines if that's Absolute, what you want. Absolutely, because I have two Switches now, and that's what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as long as you have that that online, you're good. You, you're good. You can, you can sync and down, re-download your games. Now, uh, the other console that's coming along is the Sega Genesis Mini. Are you excited about that? Uh, I am. Oh, I, you I have, have it. One. Okay. <laughs> I guess so. I did, yeah. So I, I did a, a boxing of this yesterday on, on my uh, channel. I did not, we were talking about this pre-show. I did not grow up with a uh, Sega. My, my home was Atari 2600 and mm. then Nintendo. You know, and back then you could, I mean, unless you're really privileged, you didn't have all of them. So you chose one, your parent chose it for you, really. And, and then you chose your friend who had the other. <laughs> I didn't have friends, so <laughs> I, never to, I never got a chance to play this. <laughs> so this is my first jump into Sega. And I got to say, so it's 40, they put 42 games on here, actually. They say 40, but two bonus ones. And, you know, of course they have a couple of Sonic games, but they have some really good uh, classic games on here. I won't sit here and read all of them to, to you, but... Um, like I was impressed with the lineup and they, and I was like, you know what? They play really well and they give you two full controllers. Like the controls look great. The t- controllers aren't many. They're full size, right? They're full, they're full size and they're USB. 
And I got to say, I had a ball playing on this uh, yesterday. Just playing some of these older games that I typically am not really into 8-bit, which is good because this is 16-bit. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I have no complaints. Seventy nine ninety nine. if you're kind of feeling nostalgia, you want to, you know, just buy this to be a collector or just to get in a Sega like me for the first time, I think it's a great investment. I, I'm sure like I'm QVC right here. Please buy this today. <laughs> yeah, you're not buying it from Lamar. He's keeping his. So. Exactly. No, yeah, I have no complaints about it. About it and, and, and yeah, uh, folks who want to mess with emulators, you got a much wider selection of games to choose from and, and, and everything. And that's definitely an option for some people. But a lot of people don't want to uh, don't want to go down that road. So yeah. this, this is a cool thing. Plus, you get some people just want the nostalgia of seeing the form factor and it's all that. It's really stuff. nice to see on, on your desk or wherever you're going to keep. I, I, that's why I got it. I do think it's funny that people think things look smaller from their childhood because they're bigger. And so what we do is we make them even smaller, which yeah. just no, makes you're you right. feel even more adult, I guess. Uh, before we wrap up, I know you just got your iPhone 11 Pro Max uh, yes. dropped on your desk right before the show. You I haven't even dropped it on my desk when I did the unboxing. It literally <laughs> fell out of the box. People... <laughs> People have been freaking out in the video. Like, you, you spent $1,400 and you dropped it. I, I did. They talked about how durable it was. So here you go. This is your first test. First test, and it won. It won the durability. Would I tell anybody to buy this if you already have the uh, 11, uh, what's this, the, the 10 Max, whatever this, the XS? No. I don't know. But yeah, whatever this one was called. <laughs> 10, yeah. 10 S Max. And it's absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Is there, there's... I mean, unless you're just a camera hit. If you're a camera hit, yeah, go get it. But I think the biggest improvements, man, was just an iOS 13. I, I think I think that's more of an impressive thing. But you know, you know, again, I'm a yearly upgrader because I do this for a living and just because I like spending fourteen hundred dollars <laughs> a pop. I don't know what I th was thinking, but uh, yeah, I, would, I haven't had a chance to test out the camera or anything. But it's on my desk. And I'll do a video on it next week on the yeah, uh, yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Uh, go, go, go subscribe to that channel, folks, uh, if you want to want to keep up on what Lamar's thinking about that. Yeah. A lot of stuff that Lamar gets to test out, you get to talk about on our subreddit. Submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. If you like chatting on Facebook, well, we've got a group, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's check out what's in the mailbag. Oh, Daniel wrote in and said, okay, so you were talking about Amazon's recommendations and how it can be a little confusing. This is a couple of weeks ago. Daniel says, unknown quantities. And I find this anytime I search for something on Amazon or Newegg or Target or Best Buy or any online store, I get frustrated from the featured and recommendation items. Does this mean most popular? Is it the best quality? Highest paid to list higher in the rankings? The company is overstocked or keywords match the gamified SEO product description? I'm surprised that Amazon is the only one that's getting in trouble for this. Yeah, the reason Amazon is is because they have the market dominance. But you're right. If Target had the market dominance, they'd probably be the ones under the gun for it. Um, I think my answer to Daniel is, yeah, it's probably all of those at different times or in different combinations. Uh, but I think you're expressing a universal frustration is like, wait, it's recommended. But why? I, I got to admit. I buy products if it uh, based on if it says recommended by Amazon. I, I, oh, okay. I do. Yeah, when when it comes to like some adapters or cords, especially that I need, because there's so many weird brands that I do look for that cert that certification, whether mm. it's certified or not, or is it just because they have an excess of them in their in their in their. Well, it's warehouse. that it's that editor's pick thing. It's yes. right. It's <laughs> like. I don't necessarily know the editor. I could hate the editor. I could hate their style. <laughs> I could hate their attitude. But yeah. you see that little star and you're like, okay, this must be the good one. That editor's a visco girl. <laughs> I know it. I was called that the other day. What does that mean? Uh, I was called a visco girl. We did a whole episode of It's a Thing about visco girls uh, a couple weeks back. There's not a short answer, but it's kind of like a like a hip girl of today who wants to look good on Instagram. Hey, okay, that is me. Okay, That's excellent. totally you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then real quickly from Nth Mike uh, in our DTNS Slack, Relay FM has been raising money all month for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. Uh, they've blown past their original goal of $75,000. Uh, they're almost at their revised goal of $175,000. And as part of this, Stephen Hackett and Mike Hurley, uh, longtime listeners of DTNS, remember uh, Mike, he's, he's been on the show a lot, in the, especially in the early years. Uh, they're hosting a live video podcast for Relay FM from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, so 1 p.m to 7 p.m. Pacific uh, on 
thir Friday. Uh, so if, if you're still listening on September 20th, Friday, uh, go check it out on Twitch. Uh, and you can you can help them meet their goal or even surpass their goal again. Uh, so thank you, Nth Mike, for uh, sending that out. And uh, good luck, go go, Mike and Stephen. I hope you I hope you smash even more goals. Yeah, I love St. Jude. I really do. I like supporting them. It's a really good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. Shall we check in with Len Peralta, who's been drying up a storm this entire show? Yes, yes. we should. Len, Damn. what have you drawn for us today? Well, uh, with the release of the new iPhone Humongo and uh, the <laughs> tiny, tiny Switch Lite, you can say that gaming is getting bigger and smaller, and that's exactly what this is. It's uh, it's sort of a weird dichotomy. It's these huge phones that you can play games on, but also these little itty-bitty tiny little Switch lights, itty-bitty, tiny, tiny stuff. Um, and that's what this is, this guy holding this huge <laughs> Humongo iPhone. And uh, this guy, this other little kid playing with the Switch Lite, which is like <laughs> microscopic. It's a little bit uh, exaggerated there. Sure, for sure, sure. Lynn, I love you. I just want to, I want everybody to know that, like, publicly. I love you, too. <laughs> like, 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 you make the, this is the greatest thing. I love this so much. Thank you, you know, so I much. mean, this is so good, it cured my trypophobia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was worried about that. Yes. Just me know that if you, uh, if you do get this print at my Patreon at <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Len, or uh, at my online store, lenperaltastore.com, you may get triggered by the trypophobia there. So. I am buying this right now. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you so much. And you, everybody, you join, join in as well. That'd be great. <laughs> yes. Thanks also to Lamar Wilson for being with us. Lamar had been too long. So nice to see you again. Let folks know what you've been up to. Buying this digital thing right now. Oh, okay. So, um, Sorry, that was that was a crazy uh, transition. So yeah, I just <laughs> I, I I haven't been on the show in a while. No, but I, no, I've been on I've been grinding on YouTube. You know, so you can check me out YouTube.com/slash Lamar Wilson. Entertaining videos, lots of unboxings of tech, gaming, all kind of uh, weird stuff. I'm just having the time of my life at this old age. Go check it out, man. YouTube.com slash Lamar Wilson. Uh, and don't forget to check out our new Patreon rewards coming in October. Uh, we're switching things up. This is the last month to get the classic rewards. Well, some of them are changing, but a lot of them are. And if you want to know what's changing, uh, go check them out at dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon. We would like you to submit feedback to us, if you have it anyway. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're also live Monday through Friday, and we'd love for you to join us. It's 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC, and find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We'll be back on Monday, folks. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>